We'll begin in seated, and you can be in any seated position that feels good to you. I'm going to sit in kneeling with a block between my heels. Keeping the back of the neck long, stacking the spine. I start to roll the shoulders a few times back and a few times forward. Allowing my eyelids to get heavy and close. You get a sense of settling down as your shoulders find stillness. Bring the lips together, the teeth a little bit apart. Stacking your ribs over your pelvis, your ears over your shoulders. Feel a quality of evenness between your right sitting bone and your left sitting bone. Imagine like a smoothing energy, smoothing out any wrinkles in your thoughts between the eyebrows, any tension you might be holding around the ears or the jaw. Just notice how keenly you can attune your awareness to your breath. When you're ready, invite your next inhale to help you pop open your eyes. And let's go ahead and lay down on our backs. So if you have a block or a pillow nearby, keep it kind of within arm's reach and sweep your legs out, knees bent, and go ahead and lower yourself down onto the ground. So we're going to get into the shoulders a little bit. You'll hear my floor make some sounds, some squeaky sounds. And first, just reach your right arm up by your ear. See if you can tap the thumb side down to the ground so your pinky side leads on the way back. And then you're going to bring your left arm, elbow straight, up by the ear, tapping the thumb all the way back. As you do this, keep your bottom ribs <clears throat> Excuse me. Keep your bottom ribs really rooted down. So there's an energy of kind of pulling in both directions of the arms here. And we're going to add to the complexity a little bit by uh, moving opposite arm and leg. So here's what that looks like. Left knee lifts as right arm goes by the ear. Left foot lowers as right arm comes right back down. Right knee lifts as left arm goes by the ear. Right foot lowers as left arm back down. And so it's opposite arm and knee moving like there's a string connecting the two. You can go quickly, you can go slowly with this. I'm going to recommend a little bit of a slow pace, thinking of this happening from your core, thinking of this happening from your belly, low ribs really dropping down. And then go ahead and draw both of your knees. So starting with your arms by your sides, draw both of your knees up. Squeeze your legs together and spread your toes a little bit. Yeah. You're going to open your arms either out into a T position if you have the room or cactus position with your elbows bent to 90 degrees if you have the room. Or hands behind the head. So you can go into any of those three positions. 
And you're gonna draw your knees up and over gently towards your right. So you can make this as corey as you want, or you can make it as gentle as you want. So just a little bit up and over like you're tipping over a teacup, or a lot up and over like you really are almost doing a bit of a, a lower abdomen crunch. If you feel, if you hear the squeaking, that is my old floor. And see if you can time this with your breath so that the exhale comes at the peak where the knees are at their highest and the inhale comes in the center. It's totally fine if your knees separate, but do you have an energy of squeezing them together? And then as you go over to your first side, again, if you want to make it a little harder, you can straighten one or both legs. Try not to use your arms. And then take it over to the other side, option to make it harder by straightening one or both legs. Good, and then come right back down, to, right back to center. So you're in this 90 degree shape, legs up the wall shape before you took karate. And open your legs and crisscross, right thigh over left, open and crisscross, left thigh over right, open and crisscross, open and crisscross. We'll do a few more just like that. Don't worry if your knees are straight or not. And then draw your knees into your chest, separate your knees nice and wide from one another, and come into this happy baby light shape. So my hands are on the inner thighs. I'm just using the weight of my arms to rock a bit right and left. I always feel like I'm, you know, steering a big truck or a big ship. And please settle your feet down to the ground and cross your right ankle over the left. Hands to the back of the head again. We're gonna lift up through the foot and start to curl tailbone lifts and lowers. Tailbone lifts and lowers. So this I feel in my abdomen. This top leg is actually being really, really active. If for whatever reason it's too much to have your ankle over top of the knee, you can actually do this with your right ankle in this case over your left shin. And one more. We're gonna settle the feet down wide to the edges in that and drop your knees side to side, swish and swish, side to side. So much creaking. I hope the insides of my body sound better than my floor. That's why we're here. Yeah, keep things greased up. Come back to center. Please cross your other ankle over the end of your knee and then float your foot. And again, I'm just tipping backwards to front hip points. Lift up and down, up and down, up and down. If you want, you can add a little Pilates exhale like I almost started to do a moment ago. Big, And again, you have the alternative of the ankle on your shin. And then go ahead and settle your feet. And tilt your pelvis back. So you're taking the imaginary bowl of your pelvis. And you're just rocking it back, feeling your tailbone um, curl up towards the sky, the back of your spine almost lengthening spaciousness being created back there. And then release. We're gonna do a little bit for the backs of the legs. Walk your feet kind of far away from you, like surprisingly far. And you're gonna turn your toes up towards the sky. In this case, I'm keeping my legs nice and wide because I do this, I teach this next move a lot. This is the hamstring. Um, spinal like bridge where we're segmenting vertebra by vertebra, but let's put it in plain speak. Dig your heels in, feel the back of your, your thighs kick in. So those muscles are gonna help you to lift your bum first, then your low back vertebra by vertebra, maybe the lowest handful of ribs, and then you're gonna lower right back down like you're putting the sticker back on its packaging. 
walk your feet in a little or set your feet down if you're getting any kind of cramping. Rise up again. See if you can tolerate with the toes turned up towards the sky, the heels digging in, and a slightly different position, maybe wider or further out than you normally would have them. And then let's just do one more of these because these are pretty fiery, right? So palms up, rise up, stay up for a couple of breaths, this time straight line from the shoulders to the knees. Maybe rock a little right and left. And then come on down and draw your knees into your chest. Rock a little side to side. We've done some work for our spine, we've done some work for our hamstrings, we've done some work for our, our hips even into external rotation. So now we're just gonna go straight onto our belly. So staying with the warm up still, make a little pillow for your forehead, bend one of your knees, keep your pelvis flat, and the way that you can know if you're doing this correctly is the front two hip points stay even with the floor. So I just transferred my hands down to underneath my pelvis, underneath the bony hip point. And I'm just swishing my foot all the way out and across. So again, this is one that I teach a lot because it's a really beautiful way to create mindfulness as to what's going on in the hip. And just to notice differences between the right and the left, anything you might need to honor on any given day or in any given body and lifetime. And you're gonna release that leg, bend the other, and take the foot across your body and out to the side. Across your body and out to the side, appreciating any dis differences between one side and the next. And one or two more windshield wipes just like this. Go ahead and sweep your knees wide apart from one another when you're ready. Click your heels together and see if you can drive your pelvis down. I'm gonna move my hands out of the way so they don't get crushed. And lift your knees just the tiniest bit off the floor. So if you feel this in your low back and it doesn't feel good, then all you're gonna do is squeeze your bum and press into the floor. But if you feel like you can get just enough to slide a piece of paper under your knees, that's what I'm looking for, yeah? Press the heels together like you've got a little secret there or expensive coin. And the last couple of presses. Awesome, release. Walk your hands to the sides of your ribs. Draw your ribs in, lift up so that you're in a knee down plank position. And we're just gonna shift the weight a little right and left. Warm up through the shoulders. Now the difference between a knee down plank and a table position is that your hands are a lot more forward here. So we're gonna rock back like you're going into child's pose, but pause where your body needs you to. And forward like you're going into that knee down plank. Just shift it a little back and a little front. And then as you come into the forward position, I'm gonna give you a couple of options. So option number one, you can start off in table pose and we're just gonna kind of push the ground away and tap the opposite shoulder. Option number two, you can do this in a knee down plank. Um, push the ground away and tap opposite shoulder. So it's important as you do this, this, this particular position, if you choose the knee down plank, that you squeeze your bum. And then the arm that's still on the ground is really pushing. But otherwise, you kind of end up collapsing here. And then, of course, you can do this in a regular plank. Again, squeezing the bump, trying to keep everything nice and stable. So wherever you are, settle your knees. Spread your toes. If this is reasonable for your knees, drop back. Get a nice toe stretch. Elbows get heavy for a moment. And we're gonna keep the left hand on the ground, lift up just enough so you can look forward, and then 
start to slide the right arm underneath. So thread the needle, come onto the right outer shoulder, press into that left arm, look up under, couple of breaths into your upper body, into this deep twist. And then root your hand right by your face again. Rise up right back into table pose. Work on these little kinks in your body. Swing side to side. My great thing about a home practice is that nobody's looking at you, right? You, or you can pretend. And dive your other side down. Side of the head in the floor. Press down with your right arm. A couple of breaths into back body here. You can have this top arm stretched out like we did on the other side. You can also have it right in front of your face where it gives you a little bit of added um, oomph, right? So a little bit of added ability to root down. And then rise up, press through the hands, pull the heart forward, Exhale, round to the sky. Pull the heart forward. Exhale, round. And a couple more. Curl your toes. Sit back. Active, active arms. Rise up, down dog. And since it's our first down dog, really, really press through the hands and allow your knees to bend. In fact, we're going to purposefully bend one knee and then the other. It's getting a little side to side. You might also notice that my down dog is a little shorter than it necessarily needs to be, right? On your inhale, walk yourself forward, maybe come into plank or knee down plank or take your child's pose again. On your exhale, downward facing dog. Widen the space between your feet. Shorten up your down dog. And go ahead and walk your hands all the way to the back of the mat. I shall adjust my clothing a little bit. And we're going to grab hold of opposite elbow and just shake it up. Get your traction on. Let everything jiggle. Sway right and left if you... Look at this green, you'll notice how deeply bent my knees are. And then bring your hands to your knees. If you need to come up with a neutral spine for any reason, you can do that. Otherwise, start to round using the muscles at the front of your body to help your head be the ultimate last thing to rise up. Let's roll the shoulders a couple of times here as well. Hands to the back of the head, elbows wide, squeeze your shoulder blades back, pull the heart forward, and then exhale and fold it all the way down. Walk yourself right back out, downward facing dog. And on your inhale, shift forward to plank. Exhale, lower to your knees. Chin and chest, unless you'd like to take a full or a half chaturanga. Inhale, float your hands and legs out to the floor. I recommend this over cobra or up dog right now to wake up the muscles of the back body. So they're locust pose. Hands by the side of the ribs, float through the ribs and the belly. Downward facing dog. When we have access to blocks, I'm a big fan of two blocks, one in each hand, at the heel of the hand at the back of the block to give you a little extra space for this next move. And I'm just gonna demonstrate what that's like in case you have some at home or you're considering ordering some. You'll crisscross right thigh over left, left thigh over right, and you'll just notice that this allows you, not the crisscrossing, but the blocks, allow you to have a little bit of added space to keep your legs nice and straight as you walk your way to the front of your mat. So no big deal. Inhale halfway up. Exhale, bend and fold and shake again. Inhale, rise up. Vertebra by vertebra. Spreading the toes, rooting through the ribs. Arms reach up. And then exhale, palms together over the heart. 
Let's do a little for our hips in standing. So take your feet nice and wide and just start by shifting your hips a bit right and left, right? You can take them in all directions here. Whether this is true for your body or not, a lot of people actually feel quite a bit of um, like hip popping and sounds when they first get into their hips like this. And I think in general, it's a good idea to do circular motions with a circular based joint. We're going to turn our toes all the way to the right and then shift the hips all the way to the left and then turn the toes all the way to the other side and shift the hips in the opposite direction. So it's just, this is a move I just call getting sassy. Turn and shift, turn and shift. I apologize for the excessive coordination that is required. Come back to the front of the mat. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, palms through the midline, fold in half. Blocks optional under the hands. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, fold it down, and let's go ahead and start with the left foot today. So it can be your left or your right, whatever is easiest for you to see me. You're going to root down to that back leg, float the chest, beam the arms up. Warrior one, back heel sinks down, front knee bends. Press your palms together over your heart. And let's go ahead and bend and straighten your front knee. Don't worry about bending to 90 degrees. Just go as deeply as feels good to you right now. And chances are it's going to be limited by your back and your thigh. As you straighten your front leg, see if you can keep your toes off the ground and play with that little bit of added balance challenge that it contributes. And walk your hands down the front leg. You can have your toes down to the ground too. This is our pyramid shape. And then go ahead and bend into your front knee and root your hands down to the floor. Step the front foot back. Take a vinyasa, and I'm again going to recommend a modification, so maybe knees down chaturanga this time, nice and slow. Maybe cobra instead of up dog as we continue our warm up. Connect ribs to the front pelvis, move through neutral spine down dog. And we're so much freedom and joy here just as you push your hands into the ground, spread your toes out using the sticky mat to help create a little space between the toes. Bending one knee and then the other. And then walking your hands to the back of your mat, shaking everything out, go a little crazy, nobody's looking. I always think of this analogy of letting any thoughts that are kind of occupying space rent free in my head to just dump out. And then begin to stack vertebrae by vertebrae. Rise up, press your palms together over your heart. Inhale up, and then make your way so that you can step back again. So for me, turning around, for you, do whatever you need to do. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, begin to fold. Inhale, halfway. And then exhale, take your other leg back. Sink your heel down to the ground. Get a sense of arch lifting. Base of the big toe staying rooted. And then rise up, find your warrior one. Front knee can be as bent as feels good or not. You're going to bend and straighten this front leg. Notice that there's, the pelvis is on a bit of a diagonal here, so your shoulders are squared to the front of the mat, but it's not like you have to square your pelvis when your back heels down to the ground. So straighten your front leg. Option to have your toes pointed up towards the sky, and you're going to sink your hips back and start to walk down this front leg. Variation of triangle pose, yeah, or pyramid pose, that is. This is harder on balance to have the toes up like that. It's a little more fun, a little more interesting. Bend into your front knee, root your hands to either side, step it back. If you want an alternative to the vinyasa, just hang out and plank. Rounding your back, squeezing your bum. We're gonna meet in the next couple of breaths in downward facing dog. From 
from down dog, please lower your knees down to the ground. Cushion your knees as needed. You can often fold your yoga mat up in half to give you a little bit of extra cushion at home. But I actually have two mats, as you can see, so I don't need that. And you can also use a blanket or a pillow. Rise up into kneeling. I've got my toes curled under behind me almost habitually because I'm constantly kind of working on that toe mobility. But from here, you're going to shift to your outside hip and bring the leg closest to your screen, slowly out in front of you. 90 degrees of the front leg, 90 degrees of the back leg. Good. Bring the hands to the back of the head. Spin towards the screen and back. Fingers can be interlaced and back. Spin and back. Elbows nice and wide. And let's just do two more, maybe timing them with your breath. We'll bring the palms together over the heart and then lean forward. You can bring your um, arm that's away from the screen onto your front leg. Look over your top shoulder. Variation of revolved side angle. Personally, I really enjoy this particular variation. So it's not elbow to the outside, but it's forearm to the top of the thigh. But if you prefer elbow to the outside, go for it. You can press your palms together here. So from here, my top hand is wrapped around my bottom wrist. I'm going to look down to the floor. Curl your back toes under if they weren't already. Rise your back knee and lower it down. Rise your back knee and lower it down. If you need a variation here, you can always have your hands on the floor. And of course, you can make this more challenging by bringing your elbow to the outside and just pushing your knee into your arm and your arm into your knee. So we're keeping up with the knee lifting and lower wherever you are. And then keeping that leg risen, Walk your hands to the front knee, back heel stays off the ground. Inhale, regular old crescent lunge. And then open the rainbow towards the screen. Big wide reach between the hands. Inside arm drops down. Outside arm reaches to the sky. Hands down to the floor. Vinyasa, child's pose, or downward facing dog. We've got about three to five breaths, whichever action you choose. Think of it as a little choose your own adventure. And then I'm gonna spin around so you guys can see. We're gonna rise up to kneeling again. So if you started in down dog, definitely go ahead and settle your knees down to the ground. Hands to the hips. Shift your weight onto your far away leg. Take the leg that's closest to the screen and slowly step that one forward. You'll notice that that's a little bit of a shaky move because we no longer have the multi-articular action of our feet and all the muscles of the um, feet that we're used to keeping us stable. And we have to rely on this one hip. So that's why it's a little wobbly. So from here, Interlace your fingers back of the head, and we're gonna spin. Now, I just switched the interlace so that it's the one that feels a little funky, like not my normal position. You can time this movement with breath. It should feel nice and spacious between your elbows. We've got two more spins. As you turn this time, keep the twist in your upper body. Bring your inside forearm down to the ground. I'm sorry, down to the front thigh. And you can wrap around the wrist or come into your revolved position here. So just enjoy whichever variation you got. And then we're going to play with the challenge, uh, dynamic challenge. 
I do recommend looking down to the floor. This is a really important balance thing, right? Mm -hmm. Before you rise your back knee up and down. So if you look forward, that's also fine. If you look up towards the ceiling, it's a little less grounding and it can actually be a bit more challenging for your balance. Good, so wherever you are, lifting your back knee. You could also have done all of that with your hands on the floor. You're gonna bring your inside hand down to the floor, outside arm up towards the sky, root all of your hands down, step it back, find your way to plank, knee down plank if you wish, lower down through your chaturanga, half chaturanga, knees to your chest, inhale into your back bend, and then exhale, knit together your front ribs to your pelvis, up and back, down dog or child's pose. And then wherever you are, just go ahead and walk your feet towards the front of the mat again. Come halfway up, exhale down. Hold it down. And then take a space between your knees or between your feet. So I'm going to take wider than shoulder distance, a little wider than shoulder distance here. And you're going to open one arm straight out to the side. So the elbow will stay straight, the fingers will stay straight, and the action is coming from the shoulder blade. So you want to think about shoulder blade parking on your back and then opening up to the side, shoulder height, or a little bit higher as mine is doing. Lower and lift, lower and lift. So I'm not sinking my shoulder down to get my arm up, I'm actually suctioning and lifting, right? Suctioning and lifting. So this is called scapular retraction, and it's surprisingly fatiguing for many of us, yeah? Let's do two more on this side. And then switch elbow and the knee is also working to stabilize that arm, that shoulder complex. And then suction and reach. So we're working just as much to control the lowering as the lifting. We've got two more. Last one. Exhale, shake it out. Front of the mat. Inhale, halfway up. And then exhale, fold it down. Please set your left foot to the back of the mat. Squeeze your legs to an imaginary uh, midline. Inhale, rise up. Warrior or crescent lunge. Exhale, please press your palms together over your heart. Sink your back heel down to the floor, and then open out to Warrior Two. And Warrior Two, I'm less interested in the depth, like how broad your legs get, as how keenly oriented your front knee is towards your front middle toe. So arms out, lean into that back arm, take a gorgeous uh, dancing warrior shape. So the breath is in the side body here. And then we're gonna bring it into a regular old side angle. Top arm by the ear, bend and straighten. Now from here, straighten your front leg, hand to the sh high shin, maybe just above the knee, come into a variation of triangle pose. Roll the top shoulder back, knit the ribs in, Stay connected and rooted to the base of the big toe in this front leg. Super strong legs. Roll shoulder back, gaze towards the ceiling. And then hopefully you didn't get any hip popping. We're gonna root the hands down. Optional vinyasa. Step it back to plank. I'm gonna just shift to the other side. So from your down dog, I recommend taking a little bit of a leap to the front of the mat 
or you can step your outside foot forward. You just want to make sure that you're on the opposite side that you were last time. Last time they stepped back with the left. Now I've stepped back essentially with the right. Squeeze your legs together. Inhale. Open the heart. Crescent lunge. Ribs back. Breathing into the back body. Exhale, palms together over the heart. Sink your back heel down to the ground. Bend and straighten your front knee a couple of times for warrior two. Your Vajrasana too. Open the arms. Lean into that back arm. Feel the breath into the side body here. So lots of space. And then take it into your side angle. Elbow to front thigh, front knee, optional top arm by the ear. Gorgeous straight line from fingertip to back heel, back outer edge of that foot. It's less about aesthetics than it is about like really finding that inner sense of alignment and building our subtle awareness. Body's a great vehicle for that. So take that less as a geometrical mandate and more of like an exploration, right? And now you can bring your top hand to your hip. Go ahead and straighten your front leg. Even if you need to wiggle your feet closer together, that's fine. Hand can be above the knee or below the knee. But if you're above the knee, make sure you're not really hanging. And if you're below the knee, if you happen to be pushing and kind of hanging on that leg, I want you to push back a little with your shin. Top shoulder rolls back, ribs in. Connect and breathe that upper arm high to the sky or even arm by the ear for a little added extra challenge. Trikonasana, triangle pose. As you're ready, Bend into your front knee, settle your hands, and go ahead and step back. Optional vinyasa. Good. From our downward facing dog, let's um, let's walk the hands to the back of the mat. Inhale, halfway up. This time, if you are limited in space like me, you're going into cactus arms. Otherwise, you can keep the arms straight as you had them before. Elbows higher than shoulder height is reasonable. Lower and tap your pinkies. Lift, thumbs to the sky. Lower, tap. Lift, feel all the feels in the legs. Knees can be bent here. There's a sense of lifting the chest and that will help you to keep a neutral spine. And last one. Good. Neutral spine or stack to rise. Go ahead and bring your hands to your hips. Earlier we just did a little bit of a shifting of the pelvis left and right. So pick a leg. We're gonna pick the left leg in this case and draw your right heel up towards your inner thigh your calf, wherever would feel good. So from here, squeeze the two legs towards one another, zipping up through the center line, and press your palms together over your heart. Back of the neck long, jaw slack, gaze soft. See if you can think of anything that really sparks some joy in you, maybe a loved one in your life, a little child, a pet. Think of them. And then we're gonna do something similar to what we did in the beginning of class. So the leg gets lifted, cross that ankle over your standing knee. And maybe one hand to your chest, one hand to your belly. You're gonna do tiny little micro dips here, micro chair poses. And I'm going to turn to the side to show that you can actually just hold on to something. A window ledge, a piece of furniture, a chair, back of the chair, doesn't matter. We're getting into the hips in a strength-based way rather than a stretch-based way. And that, my friends, is one of the keys to sustainable hip mobility. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, shake it out. Looks simple, but it can really fire up a lot of interesting muscles. 
Please bring your hands to your hips, shift to the other side. Come into tree pose here. You can have the heel of the lifted leg on your inner ankle a little higher, maybe even as high as your inner thigh. And you're gonna squeeze the legs together, draw the tailbone down, ribs down, back of the neck long, and just enjoy the heck out of your tree pose for a moment, Frikshasan. Backtracking a little, but stay in the pose wherever you are. If you need a little balance help, you are always welcome to tap your toes down to the floor for this shape. This is what I call the kickstand. And of course, you're always welcome to hold on to something. The squeeze, left chest, broaden the ribs behind you. Little curl of the side of the corners of the mouth up towards the ceiling. And then this leg that is lifted, we're going to cross that ankle over the knee. Bend back, come into that micro chair pose. You can keep your thumbs where mine are, palms pressing over the heart if that feels really sweet and joyful to, to you. I'm pressing actively into my thumbs or one hand to the belly, one hand to the chest, just so that I know I'm not necessarily back bending or rounding my spine as I do this. Don't forget to bend through the standing knee. Lots and lots of things going on. I know, me too. And then rise up, release, and just shake it out a little bit. Inhale, arms up. And exhale, fold through the center. Let the head be heavy. Bounce, hang, release. And then walk yourself right back out to downward facing dog. I invite you to lift your left leg high to the sky. Three legged dog here, outer hip down, pinky toe down towards the ground. Feel your glutes kick in, feel the arch of your standing foot lift. Bend this knee that's lifted. Draw it up towards the same side armpit and set your foot down to the outside of your hand. If that didn't look as smooth, that's okay. One of the things I use a lot is a block under my hand, which allows that action to go more smoothly. So from here, please lower your back knee down to the ground. We're in a really similar situation to where we were before when we did that half kneeling twist. Only now, both hands are on the inside of the front foot. Shift your hips a little right and left. This is kind of like a happy baby pose in the front leg and in the arms. And with the hand that's still on the floor, I want you to push that down. And with the hand that is that didn't make sense, the hand still on the floor. The hand opposite the front foot. Push that one down into the ground, and the hand on this, that's closest to the front foot, same side hand. That one's gonna lift up, and I'm gonna pull up like I'm pulling an arrow onto a bow, crossing over the heart, reaching towards the sky. So the hand on the ground is really pushing and lifting me up. I'm not sagging into it whatsoever at all. This is a variation of side plank, by the way when you can almost de-weight the front leg, you're getting a lot of weight into that front hand. If you want that core and hip challenge, go ahead and try lifting that front foot just a hover off the floor in front of you. Go ahead and lower it down. Root your hands. Now come into your fingertips, sink your pelvis through, and come to a little bit of a back bend here, hips shift side to side. Reach back with the hips, curl toes towards the ceiling, lean back, and then root through your hands, wiggle your foot to the side, rise up and back, down dog, child's pose, or vinyasa. Vinyasa of your choice. Connect with breath, whatever you choose. One 
one or two more breaths in down dog or in child. And then as you're ready, you're going to set up your hands. From down dog, rise your other leg high to the sky. Outer hip down, pinky toes down, arch of the lifted leg lifting. And then draw this knee, same side arm, set the foot down. Option to have a block or even a chair under your hands here, the seat of a chair. Lower your back knee down to the ground and just shift a little side to side. So we're getting just this basic hip mobility. Hand that's closest to the foot is going to lift off the floor. So hand that's furthest away from your front foot, opposite hand, roots down. We pull the arrow onto the bow, string it across the heart, reach towards the sky, coming into this variation of side plank. Lots of energy down through the arm that's still on the ground, reaching through the fingers that are up. And you could even potentially lift this front foot. Lower, settle the hands, walk them forward, sink through the hips, shift side to side. Looking a little bit more like lizard pose now. Pull the heart forward, press the pelvis forward, curl the back toes under, lift your back knee. And step it back. This will be our last vinyasa for the practice today. If you wish to take it, shift to plank. Roll to your tiptoes and lower. Back bend of your choice, maybe waking up the back body. Rooting your hands, connecting a core, finding your way back to child's pose or down dog. And eventually, everybody's in child's. Knees nice and wide. Support under your bum or behind your thighs as needed. Breath into the back body. Go ahead and walk your hands to the sides of your knees and start to stack your spine. We're gonna roll our shoulders a little bit. Coming into any seated position that feels comfortable for you. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, please take your left arm forward, your right arm behind you. A few breaths gazing over your back shoulder. You'll notice that I'm sitting on a block and I almost always sit on a block when I'm on the floor. It's just more comfortable that way. Inhale forward, arms up. And then exhale, take it to the other side. The left shoulder rolls back. Gaze is soft. Ribs back. Let's take one more sweet, complete breath here. Inhale back through to neutral. Reach the arms to the sky and then bring your right hand down to the ground, left arm by the ear. So gentle side bend, you can let your head hang. Shake it out a little bit if that would feel good. And then inhale, rise up. And bring it to the other side. And again, let the head hang. We're not looking for a static, long held stretch, just dynamic, gentle rocking. 
Inhale, rise to center. And then you can take the block away if you're sitting on a block or a pillow. Settle your hips down and then round your spine back. You'll have a little more access to rounding if you're not seated up on something. Roll to the front of your sitting bones and lift your heart. Round it back, posterior pelvic tilt, spinal flexion. Inhale into spinal extension, anterior pelvic tilt. Easy breath in and out through the nose. And then if you choose to stay upright for the final portion of our practice together, grab something to sit on, like a block or your pillow or a folded towel. And if you'd like to lay on your back for Shavasana, you can grab a little something to cover your eyes, a t-shirt, um, a little something for under your knees, like a denser, uh, bigger pillow. And wherever you are, let your bones settle in. Think about the weight of your bones almost sinking into and making a pattern in the floor or in the yoga mat. Let the shoulders relax down, elbows be heavy, fingers curl in. Back of the neck long. Spaciousness around the eyebrows, forehead, the eyes themselves. The jaw. Any thoughts pop into your mind, acknowledge them and allow them to pass by. Settling right back down to an awareness of breath. An awareness of the support beneath you. Awareness of sensation. Feeling and aware of 360 degrees, three dimensions truly of breath, up, down, front, back, side, side.
Notice if you can make each and every breath a little bit longer. A little bit smoother. One of the beauties of this home practice is that you're welcome to stay here in seated meditation or shavasana for as long as you wish. If you're ready to slowly start to deepen your breath, just notice if that feels reasonable for you right now. Again, aware of the 360 degrees of breath. And imagining that breath traveling to your fingers and to your toes. Gentle wiggling, waking up. If you're seated, you might start to roll your shoulders or take little gentle spinal motions. And if you're on your back, you might slowly draw your knees towards your chest and rock a little side to side. Rolling to whatever side feels good. Using your next breath to rise upright Bring our palms together over the heart. Allowing the hands together, Anjali Mudra, to be a symbol of the bringing together the wholeness of ourselves. The light, the dark, the frustrated, the easygoing. And welcoming every aspect of ourselves into this space, this thing called life experience, committing to kindness internally and externally in our thoughts and our words and our actions. I'll take a full breath in, closing our practice today with a sigh. I'll give it as a cleansing breath. Option to bow down if you feel moved. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste. Thanks everyone for being here and sharing this time with me.